We've talked many times about you first becoming a, an Elvis fan, but uh, when when did you, and when and how did you first get involved in performing? I, I first started performing in 1982, I was 20 years of age, and uh, there was always something in me to, to sort of want to perform, but I was always too shy, and yet Elvis inspired me in so many ways, and, so, and his music sort of pushed me to say, you know, you can do this, you really can do this, and I used to go to my local pub and have a few beers and get a, what we call Dutch courage and get up and sing a few songs. But I was still, you know, quite a shy guy. And I've, I've told this story many, many times, but uh, I realised there was one point when I thought, well, you don't need any alcohol inside you to do something that comes within here. You know, you've got a passion for something that you want to do, just go ahead and do it. So that, that's how it started really. And I got myself uh, a band shortly afterwards and we, uh, we just took off. Would you say um, Elvis's passing kind of pushed that more you more towards music than it would have had he not? Uh, yeah, I'd say Elvis's pass, passing pushed me uh, in a great deal because, like I said before, I'd grieved for somebody that I'd never even met. And I never knew him, he never knew me, yet he, he felt like he was a member of my family. And, and I just thought, you know, I've got, I've got to do something to show my appreciation for him changing my life. As many other great rock and roll stars of the 50s and 60s did as well. So, um, like I said, it was something that I wanted to do. It was something in my heart, and I just went right ahead and did it. In 816, you were the only UK person that we followed, like on a, a, a large amount in the documentary. So I was, I wanted to ask you, how did Elvis's death really affect people over in your country, as opposed to just here in the US? It was just like it was here. The problem was we couldn't just jump on a bus or a plane in those days and, and come here to Grayson. There was thousands and thousands of people here at Grayson wanting to get a glimpse of Elvis and find out what the hell was going on or perhaps talk to a family member or a friend or something. All we could watch was the news broadcast at certain times of the day. We'd have the radio on and Elvis was playing 24-7. But uh, we were in a state of limbo and we didn't know what the hell was going on. Well here they had news coverage that was just kind of flooding every station. You couldn't, if you didn't, if you weren't an Elvis fan, you were forced to watch it anyway because it was everywhere. What was it like over in the UK? Mainly in those days, we didn't, we didn't have satellite TV in those days, so mainly it was, it was radio stations. I mean, radio stations were playing Elvis 24, 24 seven. You know, there was, there was nothing on. There was, a, there was um, a European channel called Radio Luxembourg, which we all listened to in the UK. Um, and there's a guy, a famous DJ over there called Tony Prince from Radio Luxembourg and uh, that station decided to cut all adverts and it was, a, it was a station which lived on advertisements, you know, that's how they paid their bills but they decided to cut all adverts for 24 hours or so and just played non-stop Elvis music and um, it affected people in many different ways and people shown it in, in, in different ways as well. Um, as I said, all these radio stations played Elvis 24-7 but for the TV, like I said, there was no satellite TV then, so we just had to rely on the news broadcasts. So I think I, I scheduled every time I knew that a, a news broadcast was coming on any of the channels. I would, I would tune into them straight away. And you know, one of the hardest things I remember at that time was they shown a clip of Elvis singing It's Over on the a lower TV show. And he had a, a roll of sweat coming down there and it looked like a tear. And that was about four hours after I had learned of his passing and as soon as I saw that tear come down there I, I cried like a baby and uh, I've grieved for a long time and my life was never the same again. Did you guys get to watch the, um, the funeral procession over there? Yeah we watched the funeral procession, that was, that was broadcast live on TV because at the time it was going on our, our, one of our channels was showing the news live at the time and uh, we, we saw the white Cadillacs and we saw the girl run out into the street and grab hold of the car you know want to jump on the on the on the hood and it, it, it was just crazy and you know we're, we're trying to watch through stained glass eyes you know our eyes were all steamed up and misty and uh, but yeah we watched that live all right what can you tell me about the uh, coverage that was going on in the newspapers over in the uk Do you know the very next day i went out and bought every single newspaper on the stand and i did that for the next four or five weeks and there's lots of tabloid make-believe stories of all these women come out who'd said they'd had an affair with Elvis. There was even a famous actress in the UK called Diana Dawes, and suddenly she's talking about her affair with Elvis. And there's lots of celebrities talking about the memories they had when they met Elvis, of course. And 
And don't forget, just before Elvis passed, uh, the book Elvis What Happened had just been released in the UK as well, as well as over here, written by Red, Sonny West and Dave Hebler. So a lot of that book was serialised in the newspapers as well. It did go down too well at the time. I know those guys that loved Elvis. I mean, I, I, I knew Sonny quite well when I, I met Red uh, shortly before he passed away. But um, I, I know why they did it. I, and, and I know that they were sorry for, for what they did have to say, say about Elvis, but I also know that in their heart they love that guy and I know that the only person that could save Elvis Presley at the time was Elvis Presley. Elvis killed Elvis. It's as simple as that.